I, a couple of hours I ever spent not you. This man was, uh, do you know, when we were kids in the school, there was always the best boy in the class, this is he. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Make up your own mind, don't, don't, don't believe me, make up your own mind. Yeah. No, no pressure, no. No pressure, no, really, no. <laughs> the, um, I was in Limerick last night, I, I, was, I was here for Thursday, a bit of a gig on on Thursday, and then um, I went home on Friday morning, and it was hard sore to be leaving the store, and I was down in Limerick at home last, last night, and I was thinking, fuck it, you know what, I'm going back for the healing. <laughs> and the reason I wanted to come back for the healing is because I wanted to give this poem at it. I was like, it's not for the healing that we're here, what is it? And it's a poem called Before You Push the Chair. And it's a lot less crack than most of the other stuff, sorry. <laughs> and it goes like this. I want you to know that I've been there. In those moments when it feels as though every wall is a prison. When the whole world kneels upon you and the darkness of your vision has encompassed all before you and turns your whole world black. And it feels as though you'll never get to see your old world back. And I've been labeled with depression and branded with disease and given the impression that for anyone who sees past this great deception that's been sold to us as fact as a template for expression as to how we should react. But I've come to see despair as a product of control. That's embedded in our psyche by the forces who patrol what we see upon our papers or read upon our screens as deliberately tapered to tamper with our dreams. And for all that we resist it, it's there on every surface from our buses to our bodies all designed to fit the purpose to remind us that for all we have it's still never enough that there'll always be that void to fill with other mindless stuff and though some still cling to God to bring some structure to their lives and others seem to need to be destructive to survive there's a whole new generation wandering aimless and confused who were born into an age that never had a God to lose in their quest for validation they turn to the machine because they've come to know the world through the comfort of a screen. And I've seen the way we've gone from being socially adept, from a people who were strong to being totally inept, where anxiety and loneliness are living side by side and everyone's just saving face for fear of losing pride, as the constant threat of homelessness and risk of repossession has come to manifest itself as clinical depression, so we medicate the masses just to keep them from the rope and eradicate the last remaining evidence of hope just to sell us back the superficial versions of ourselves from the sacrificial altars of our supermarket <clears throat> shelves. And then tell us that a problem halved is just a problem shared. With us a problem doubled is a problem that's been laid because so many now despair. Because to paraphrase Voltaire, they see who rules who suffers, yet still are running scared. But before you push the chair, I want you to step down from there and be the light you're born to be. To understand that those who see things differently are those who reshape history. That the prophets and the scriptures with the poets of the times and everyone you'll ever meet has struggled with the mind, but one true friend will always trump a million friends online. For reality is distorted and contorted to obscure and designed to isolate us and to make us insecure but for all our social networks our net worth is obsolete when we need to praise the strangers to make us feel complete but beyond our echo chambers when we lift our eyes we'll see that around us lie the embers of our own humanity and as day is why we name the night so too we'll come to see that the day we like to blame in life is only ever we and for all we try to justify the versions of our truth that will always be perversions to another's absolute cause no matter where the roots lie the one thing guaranteed is that the plant will always come to bear the hallmarks of the sea and look I don't have all the answers and I'll never say I do have just as many doubts and insecurities as you 
but a friend of mine once told me that I showed up in a dream. And I'm not exactly sure what any of it means, but I was walking through a desert with my back towards the sun in a crowd of other people, but for every other one, their shadows fell before them, but for me, it fell behind. And he said that he just stood there and watched us for a time. Till at last, I took an hourglass and smashed it with a stone and poured the sand upon the sand as there I stood alone. And when he asked me why I did it, I turned to him and said, well, that was simply just the way that the universe was made. And I know that may sound cliche, but I've been thinking about it since. And the more that I've been thinking, the more that I'm convinced that maybe all of us are only pouring dust upon the dust. And it's not us killing time, but more just time that's killing us. But when two people every day here now are taking their own lives, and countless many others are struggling to survive, at what point do we acknowledge that this problem's epidemic and not just a polemic as some college academic because we're so intent on carrying this intense collective grief that we seem content to marry in their lack of self-belief to a greater sense of victimhood that always comes across as a symptom of the dogma we've adopted from the cross. But look, I'm tired of trying to find the words. I'm sorry for your loss. And that loss could be avoided for a fraction of the cost. I'm tired of the statistics because the numbers can't uphold the stories of the victims that will largely go untold and I'm tired of the stigma that still surrounds our mental health as if we're simply feeling is a failing of the self. But I'm mostly just exhausted because I'm all too well aware that right now someone else is just about to push the chair. And I wish that I could tell them for however dark their plight that through the shelter of each other, we can learn that love is light. Incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm calling a break for a few minutes after that. I'm a break for a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah.